Well, we're into another week of, of this virus. And one of the funny things I've been thinking about is I never realized just how non-essential I was in my ministry. There are so many groups that are more essential than I. I downloaded the list of all the essential folks and, and most of them I get. I mean, I also get those that are non-essential, like tattoo parlors are non-essential. I get it. There's other non-essentials. However, when is faith or church essential? When will people begin to really, as a culture, say, you're essential? I get it. We can't be all together. But just in some manner, I just couldn't help but thinking when we keep using that word essential, essential, can't Jesus be essential? Can't us somehow figuring out a way to get together? I get it. Keeping social distance, spacing, fine. But I do want to just say that at some point, Christ and church has to be essential. And then I think everything will be made right, even beyond, even beyond this virus. God bless you. Let's celebrate the Mass today. And let us recognize the woman in the gospel today that's accused. Let us pray that whenever we are accused, interiorly by our own self-doubts or exteriorly, we may trust that Christ is with us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Happy Monday. Hope you're plugging along, folks. Beautiful readings today um, and from the book of the prophet Daniel and the woman caught in adultery. So let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wonder, wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house. And the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for a walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. 
Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old man also shouted at her, and one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for they had never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim, the next when the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people, they ordered, "Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim." When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. And all her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders got rose up and laid their hands on their head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the door of the garden, dismissing the girls. The young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we were in the corner of the garden, we saw this crime. We ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the door and ran off. Then we seized her and asked her who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried out, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to her execution, God stirred up in the Holy Spirit of a young man named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders, to Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, Have you grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, freeing the guilty, although the Lord said, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now, Then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he replied. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head. For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Cana, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak tree, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your life. For the angel of God awaits with a sword of, to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to to death. This thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. In response, Psalm 23, Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. 
Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. May the words of the Lord be in my heart, on my lips, then worthy and joyfully proclaim this holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived in the temple area, and all the people started to come to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin throw the first stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a couple of things I wanted to think about with you is, is this huge, long reading. It's very beautiful. Is that the prophet Daniel is able to separate the lie. You notice what happens with these men is that they begin to be complete, completely confused. They become um, obsessed and um, lustful. And it turns them not only against God and this woman, but it really turns them against themselves because the scripture says, and their eyes were no longer uh, lifted to heaven and their consciences were suppressed. How true that is even with this spirit of impurity these days. The consciences are suppressed. They don't see. And so there is this experience of um, isolation and it's this great paradox where the person that's lustful is feeling alone and they want people to come into that lust, into that isolation. And so what we want to be aware of, especially now, especially, is you have to remain pure. You have to remain holy. You have to be careful of your devices, folks, because all of those will lead you down that rabbit hole of great sin and, and temptation. Lastly, is I just want you to recognize that when this woman stands before Christ, this woman could represent all of humanity because Christ came to die. Christ came to suffer for this woman. And yes, we are all can have our sins that can condemn us. But you know what would have been more profound is an experience of mercy from those elders. And then it said, she was caught, Lord, but mercy mercy upon her, like the father of the prodigal son, to come and bestow grace. As I um, celebrate the Mass, what I want to pray for folks today is all of those that are suffering with uh, the sin of lust and to pray and to teach our families and to teach our homes and to teach our church that it's only humility and love and grace and God's mercy in the sacrament of confession that will pull us through this. Look, my, my prayer is that there'll be some gigantic big fish coming back to the sacrament of confession through all of this. Folks will either come back open and ready 
and just willing to go deeper, or they'll just sort of remain entrenched in their sinfulness. But no one can say that God didn't give an abundant blessing of this virus. I pray that we can make the most of this tr time and really come back stronger, more deeply rooted, maybe smaller, but rooted in Christ. And so we offer some petitions, folks, for the church and all who serve in the church, that we may be prophetic witnesses of your love. We pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, Lord, especially those with addictions, addictions to computers and other um, technology, we pray to the Lord. For all those who feel the condemning reality of lust, that interior accusation from self and from the evil one, that they will experience confession to liberate them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of the Mass, for the soul of John Schmelzer, and for the special intentions for Paula Constantine and Father Matthew uh, Ulad, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, hear our prayers and those in our hearts, asking them through your Son, Jesus, through Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And so those of you watching, I invite you just to put all of those areas in your life that contradict love in this on the altar today. Anything that is a spirit of lust, which could be pride. I love my job more than the Lord. I love myself. Some people even love their past sins because they keep talking about them. Let's surrender those before the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself, share in our own humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash me of my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, that we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, and Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, you are faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more easily intent on prayer and on works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so now with the angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostle St. Andrew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Whenever I receive the Eucharist during this time, I always ask the Holy Spirit to feed the people that are watching this show, uh, Mass, this video, and also for my people that come to me and send petitions. So I receive for you, I receive with you, and I receive the Eucharist um, to strengthen you. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body of Christ keep me safe to eternal life. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be, be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And may the Lord bless your homes, bless your cars, keep you safe, bless your bodies. May the precious blood of Jesus cover you in all you do. May the Lord be with you to sustain you mentally, spiritually, emotionally, May Almighty God bless you, folks. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. That one's extra. Uh, anyway, God bless you, folks. Have a great day. Um, we're planning for Palm Sunday. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm told we can't hand out the palms, but who's to know? If you have any intentions, send them to me, okay? Father Dan Leary, all one word, Father Dan Leary at Gmail. I print them out and I put them in my chapel. Anyway. Have a beautiful day. God bless you.